What's up guys, Big Papa Drock back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. And today guys, we're talking buffs, baby. Buffs, champion rebalancing, it's real, it's happening. But is it enough? Is it enough? Well, listen, your boy Drock, arena lord or arena aficionado or, you know, former arena lover before polymorph uh, is here to tell you whether or not these buffs are enough or whether they didn't quite get there. So they have announced Plarium has that they're gonna buff three different champions. That is awesome, I'm excited. Let's take a look, let's deep dive into what they're doing and whether or not they should have gone a little bit further. So the first champion that is up guys is Little Miss Annie from the Undead Hordes. Now I have a Little Miss Annie and I'll tell you honestly, I have never once used her, I don't think. Um, she has been outclassed basically since the moment she was introduced. You can tell by her reviews, she isn't super well liked. You know, she's an arena-based champion for the most part, and, but man, 4.3 ain't getting it done in today's meta. So let's talk about what they're doing and let's talk about if they got, if they got it right, did they do enough? So, all right, here we go. They said on their A1, they've, they've removed conditionals. So pretty nails, still a three hitter, Still a 50% chance of placing 100% heal reduction debuff, but now it also gets a 60% decrease defense debuff. So, okay. So she's getting a decrease debuff or defense debuff on her A1. That's fine. Um, you know, that's not that's not bad. Uh, looks like a 75% chance if this still holds true when fully booked. Sure. Not super useful necessarily at the high level because obviously the question here is always cheap, but not a bad uh, A1 and certainly heal reduction and decreased defense if you don't get sheeped can make for some interesting stuff with stuff like emergency heal or other things like that. So, okay, all right, that's fine, A1. Let's take a look at the A2. She's got so many skills, by the way. Three skills, two passives. She has lots of stuff going on here. Hollow, hollow doll. Tax an enemy two times. What's changing here? Uh, looks like nothing. Is none of this changing? None of this is changing. This is all the same. So what do we do? Attacks one enemy two times, place 50% increase attack. Before attacking, cool. If the target's under a shield buff. Oh, this is changing. Okay, so they're removing the shield buff requirement. Okay, okay. All right, ignores 20% of the target's defense if they're under shield buff. So they removed that, so that's good. That's a great change. So she doesn't know, she no longer has to worry about if the target is under a shield debuff, or shield buff, I should, I should say. She's placing increased attack on herself before she attacks, and she's ignoring 25% of the target's defense, no matter what. That is great, that's a really good change. Still places the perfect veil, fills the turn meters by 30%, uh, no matter what, even if it doesn't kill the target. Okay, so that's a good change. So they've removed all the conditionals on this. So this is a much better ability now. She's self buffing, she's ignoring defense, she's still placing a perfect veil without having to worry about killing somebody, and she's still boosting her turn meter, even if it doesn't kill someone. So she's getting both. Nice, that's a good buff. That's an improvement on this ability for sure. All the conditionals really held this ability back, and I know this ability can hit really hard. So, good. That's a good, good buff. Okay, I can get on board with that. Let's take a look at Playdate. Still ignoring 25% of the damage. Sorry, I can't show you, like, what they've written because there's nowhere for me to, like, do it. I have to read it over here on one screen and then try to explain it here. So, that's kind of frustrating. But uh, also places Revive on Death on this champion for two turns if this attack kills an enemy. So, it looks like... Uh, she's again, she's taking all of the conditionals out on this ability as well. So it doesn't matter. Higher defense doesn't matter. It's still going to ignore 25% of the target's defense. It's still going to destroy H the HP. And again, it has nothing to do. All these conditionals come out. So it's just ignoring defense. It's destroying HP no matter what. And okay, this conditional stays in here. We'll repeat attack a second time if the target has both higher defense and higher max HP than this champion. So interesting but also places a revive on death buff on herself if she kills someone with this. Okay, all right, yeah. I mean, again, good change. Um, this champion hits super hard for single hits, so this is good. I like this overall, not bad. Let's take a look at the passives. Mm, toys don't die, they do anything here. It doesn't look like it, they left this the same. Attacks enemy, kill this champion with the default skill. That's kind of cool, yep, yep. All right, yeah, that's still the same. Magical Heart, what have they done here? Each has a 50% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 10%, so they've increased this by 5%. 100% chance of destroying the target's max HP by 10% of the damage inflicted when attacking enemies under heal reduction 
or decreased defense. So they're still leaving this pretty conditional. This part right here, still, still conditional. Also heals the champion by 10% of the damage inflicted when tagging minions under heal reduction and decreased defense. Okay, so this passive doesn't really get that much better. Like they just add the decreased defense and they up it to 10%. Eh, not really that great to be completely honest, especially because it's only a 50% chance of that happening. I don't think this went far enough to be completely honest. I think this should just be a straight up turn meter decrease. Um, you know, if you want to, if you want to leave the conditionals on there, I guess you could, but I feel like a 50% chance, eh, just seems okay. It just seems okay, right? Uh, it's, it's all right. It's it's an improvement for sure. But does this put her in the meta? Um, I don't think so, guys. I don't think so. I think this is a good improvement. Don't get me wrong. This is definitely a better improvement of her kit than some of the more recent buffs we've gotten. But I don't think it goes far enough, maybe. Like, when I think about what could have really made her interesting is potentially you know, getting an extra turn if she kills somebody or potentially blocking revive on one of these abilities. Um, you know, that kind of stuff would have made her a lot scarier in today's meta. Or, you know, maybe one of these abilities goes through stone skin or, or goes through shield. So I just don't think it's quite enough, honestly. Um, she's definitely better than she was. She's more usable. You're not gonna be as frustrated to have her, but it's, it. I feel like they left a little bit on the table. So overall, I would say this is decent. A decent buff for Little Miss Annie. Could have absolutely been better. Definitely could have been worse, as we've seen recently. But I don't think puts her into the meta because she's missing kind of those abilities like extra turn, block, revive, ignore shield, whatever. Like, she's got really good damage, don't get me wrong. But it is always single target. Um, and I don't think she gets right. She's not getting extra turns. Now, so she's limited to, to killing one enemy basically at a time. So, okay. All right. Not bad. Not bad. Not not amazing. Not bad. Let's take a look at Supreme Aethel now, who I think is Sacred Order for Supreme Aethel. Yes. Supreme Aethel, one of the most reviled champions in the game. Uh, and for good reason. This champion sucks uh, in its current in its current form. So I'm curious as to what they've done here. So they're basically trying to look, look, make her even better with wave based content. Okay. So not really super PVP based. Okay. That's cool. Exemplar stoicism. All they've done here is increase the damage on her a one. Okay. So fine. It's an a one, like increased damage is good. That's a good thing. Cold company. They have. Okay. So this is interesting. Tax on enemies will ignore strength and ally protection and unkillable buffs on enemies under a freezy buff. Then has hundred percent chance of placing a freezy buff. Yeah. This, this ability made no sense ever. Like, okay. It attacks enemies, but it will ignore all of this if they're already under a freezy buff. But Oh, by the way, we're going to place the freezy buff after this turn. Like this is one of the dumbest abilities in the game. And so they've actually fixed this, right? So they've made it so that before attacking, she's placing the freeze debuff for a turn. And then also she's getting an ignored defense when people are under a freeze debuff, which is good because obviously freeze debuffs reduce your damage overall. So getting ignore defense will be really big for making this ability stronger. Now, again, anytime you're placing any type of debuff in this game, the biggest question for arena is polymorph, depending on what level you're at. So this doesn't solve any of that, but this is absolutely a much better change for what she's doing. She's freezing, she's getting increased damage, and she's still ignoring strength and ally protection on unkillable buffs. That's big, right? That's big. Um, wish this were a two, you know, maybe a two hitter or I'm trying to think like it's, it's an AOE. Two hitter would be nice for like Rotos, that kind of stuff, you know, but yeah, for the most part, I think this is a good change. This is a definitely an improvement. Let's take a look at her A3. Place a 50% increased attack buff, increased crit rate, shield buff, and she gets increased accuracy. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And then it grants an extra turn so this is great so okay so she's buffing herself increase crit rate increase attack and increase accuracy and then she gives herself an extra turn so you can go into this then land this which is good freeze people this is definitely a, a, a big improvement for her for sure just fixing this ability by itself is a massive improvement but giving her increase attack or increase accuracy is so big when you think about wave based content or even any type of arena based stuff because you want to be able to build your nukers to hit as hard as humanly possible. And if you're having to build 
for accuracy as well as crit damage and everything else you just can't do it so this is a good change this is overall a massive massive improvement to her kit like i'm happy with this this is good we have to see what the multipliers are and how that affects kind of her damage with the a1 and then also if that 20 percent ignore defense on the a2 really ups the damage that much but this is a massive improvement for supreme Aethel. this is a good buff i think this is better than there's a little miss annie buff just looking at it especially because she's aoe based which really helps and she's self buffing and anyone that's putting increased crit rate or increased attack you know what i mean that's that's big you can build her with less crit rate hypothetically and still get some big nukes out there four turn cooldown which is a bummer i wish this were like three turn but i understand why they didn't do that so all right that's good i like that that's a good change doesn't make her the meta for sure uh, and again, at high level, Polymorph is still a massive problem with anyone that's placing debuffs. So that kind of hurts her kid a lot. So until they fix that, you know, she's definitely not going to be in that conversation. But for PvE content, for sure, this is a really good change. And now the one we've all been waiting for and the one I have been looking forward to talking about the most, we're sticking in Sacred Order and we're going to Siegfront. And oh, baby, oh, baby, what are they doing to Siegfront? We just did a video, I should say we, as in Ash and I, talking about how, well disappointing this champion is and what how he's the worst or one of the worst mythicals and i stand by that i think he is quite a bad mythical in his current form but what are they doing to make him better and is it enough let's see they got they're increasing damage okay so they're basically just increasing damage all right so let's talk about this so he's getting increased damage on the a1 he's getting increased damage on the a2 these were both desperately needed his damage on these skills sucked compared to other mythicals other leg legendaries even um and it's a shame because he has a cool kit so that's a really good change both of these really needed that rage of the nephilim i'm really happy they're doing this i suggested this in my seek Fring showcase video a couple months back what they're doing is they're also increasing damage which is good but they're giving this ability ignore defense awesome this is going to be a sick ability that has the potential to one shot an entire team um with that kind of change this is a great change great change all of these changes really good needed increased damage needed something else on this ability that is an awesome change that's exactly what i suggested three months ago so i'm really happy to hear that that is great stay the blade what they're doing here is they're increasing the block damage buff on this champion for two turns basically that's smart because obviously he gets switched into his mythical form um allowing him to stay alive longer so he can res everybody so that makes sense okay cool that's a good change and then on the alternate form you are getting a block damage They're only changing one thing which is his revive is putting block damage up for two turns on all allies so that's really good that is very very strong very strong ability now to put block damage on all allies for two turns off a revive huh no other changes though Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Here's the question with Siegfried. So look, all of these are great changes. Exactly what he needed. Damage increase across the board. Fantastic change. You know, better, better revivability. I mean, this is a god tier revivability. Frankly, one of the best in the entire game now. Um, with the fact that it's a block damage for two turns now on a four turn cooldown. That is a really damn good revive but <laughs> there's there's a big but here and i'm disappointed because i think i think they left something on the table they really needed to fix they're not changing the order of his forms and that is going to make him significantly less useful in arena uh, and i'll tell you why mythicals are so valuable in arena because they counter lockout right they counter lockout. They have a second form where if your first form gets locked out, you can switch. So you still have utility. Uh, and on, on top of that, the best mythical damage dealers typically have their first form as the support and their second form as the damage, which means even if you lock them out, so think of like Grawl or think of the lizard, right? With their attack form on their second form. So that even if you lock them out, they are still a massive threat damage wise. Here's the problem with the buff they just did to Siegfried. They are not solving that issue whatsoever. So again, you see the lizard here support and then attack for the second form. So if you get locked out on this first form, it doesn't even matter. You can switch. Well, guess what? On Siegfried, you can't do anything. So if you get locked out on this first form, 
he still can't choose when to switch. Ah, Plarium. This was one of his biggest problems. <laughs> this is this is his biggest problem that you don't have choice with this champion. He doesn't counter lockout at all. And that is one of the number one reasons why you're picking a mythical in the first place, right? Is so that you don't have to worry about lockout. So this buff is definitely not enough. It's not enough. It is a good buff. He needed damage increases for sure. And his revive ability has gotten a lot better without a doubt. But hypothetically, you know, even though this is what, two turns now on this block damage on him, even though this is two turns for his own like passive, if he's about to get killed, the reality is, is the way you deal with this champion is you just lock him out like anybody else. And then you don't kill anybody else. You kill him first. And then like, then what? Then, then he doesn't accomplish anything, right? I mean, this is an improvement, but man, talk about leaving something on the table. What they needed to do was, yes, buff his damage. Absolutely. This is all fantastic. Buff his revive. Sure, that's awesome. But man, dude, switch the forms. Put the support form first. Let's put the support form first. Put his attack form second and let him switch forms when he wants to. Damn, they're so close to like making him a fantastic champion, right? Because that, like, if you did that, then Siegfried vaults like right up to A tier, probably at minimum, possibly even S tier, frankly. Then he becomes a champion you are seeing consistently in arena. He gives you another option, another great damage dealer, another great support, because the support kit is actually quite good. Um, but man oh man they really that that is so disappointing because lockout completely counters what he does and that is a massive massive bummer and unlike like he does get a 20 percent damage on skill reduction in his secondary form but at the same time other champions like the lizard have better overall damage reduction built into their kit for like rewarding you for building attacks so this is like so close to being a phenomenal buff, but it just doesn't quite get there. And I don't think, like, I think you'll see him more than you do now. You barely see him at all now because of how crappy he is realistic to other mythicals or even other champions. But man, dude, like, really missed an opportunity here because he gets locked out. He is completely and utterly useless. I mean, all he's got is the A1 then, that's it. That sucks. And you can't even choose to switch off the form. Bummer. Bummer, missed opportunity here. Really needed to go further. I mean, would they buff him again? Probably not. But if they were going to buff him again, just switch the forms, let him choose when to go into attack form. And now you've got a damn good mythical champion that can compete with champions like the Lizard and Garal. Because right now I'm picking the Lizard and Garal over him pretty much every time, no matter what. Uh, and I'm countering him with a Lizard and locking him out, or I'm countering him with you know a warlord or any other kind of normal lockout because he can't do anything about it oh that's a bummer that's a bummer they came so close to making a really great buff so anyway guys those are my thoughts uh, a lot of people asked about him now you know i think overall the best buff probably goes to Aethel, frankly in terms of like doing more of what her kit requires um i think little miss annie has overall the worst buff i'd put siegfried somewhere in the middle and that he's so close to being really good, but they just didn't finish the job. So come back and do it again, guys. Let's let's make him let's make him the meta. Let's make him really good. Like this is such a this these skills are so good. Like his skill kit is so good, especially with increased damage. But you just gotta make him so that he doesn't have to worry about lockout like the other great mythicals don't. So there you go. Those are my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments below what you think. Do you agree with this? Do you think it's far enough? Am I underrating these buffs? Am I overrating these buffs? Curious to hear what you guys think. So hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you later. Big Papa Drock, out.